All right. You know, sometimes people just don't learn their lessons. And sometimes they just act like entitled little brats. And you might say, I'm talking about wrestling fans. No. <laughs> their hero, Daniel Bryan, of course. Oh, flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the launch position. So let's talk about SmackDown this week, and I'll explain what I mean. You get the opening segment right away, because it's always good for business to do this. You start off with the Tribal Chief and Paul Heyman and Jey Uso. And the Tribal Chief, a hot mic, and let it flow, baby. And what a, what a, what a respectable individual our head of the table, our Tribal Chief, is. Because he was able to admit, secure enough in his masculinity, secure enough in his strength and his toughness, that Edge got one in on him last week. He got one in, and only one in, and that will be the only one. But see, you could be an alpha type of male and show some vulnerability. And what Roman is trying to teach all of us is that you can't be so insecure that you hide from any potential weaknesses. You have to see those weaknesses. You have to own those weaknesses. You have to work on those weaknesses. See, every time he goes out there on TV, he is teaching. You're getting teachable life moments. It should be like a master class by Roman Reigns about how to kick ass in life. And he's giving it to you for free. You should be damn appreciative. And I know Edge isn't going to be because Roman's trying to warn him, trying to tell him, like, you don't want this. You really don't want this. Your dad, your husband, Roman knows that life. He didn't want to see what's going to happen to you, happen to you, Edge, at WrestleMania. So it's your time to back out now. He tried to warn you, so don't be pissing and moaning when he sits there and rubs rupshot all over your Canuckin' ass. But of course, here he comes. Yes, mules, mules. That stupid little garden gnome dares to interrupt our tribal chief. What the hell business does he have out there? And how dare that Keebler elf question Roman's dedication to family? How dare he with those backhanded, smart-ass, smart-alecky remarks questioning why Roman would do what he did? Roman wanted to get his match done and early out of the way so that way another Elimination Chamber match could go on later and he had familial responsibilities at home, Daniel Bryan, you piece of trash! How dare you! And leave it to Daniel Bryan, after clearly being defeated at Elimination Chamber, being all angry and coming out there and saying, I'm white, I'm entitled, I get another rematch. No, you don't. Back in the line, bitch. That's what Jay said when he fucked him up. Yeah, that's how you get it done. See, even the stubborn and stupid can learn from time to time, folks. If Jay can do it, so can you. It's the power of our tribal chief. And I really like, too, how Edge, after that opening segment, is like, well, what the hell? It's kind of pulling a bit of, bit of a stinger, like a 97, getting mad because Luger got the belt before he got the belt off of Hogan. Edge is sitting there saying, nobody gets that title shot before I do. You know what, Edge? That's right. That's absolutely right. Fuck that guard gnome. Fuck the Keebler elf. You want the tribal chief so you could absolutely main event WrestleMania instead of sitting there playing curtain jerker role with the freaking Daniel Bryans of the world. I can't blame him. And you know deep down inside, if you were in Edge's spot, you would agree. Uh, Mysterios versus Otis and Chad Gable was a match again. Who cares? Next. Apollo Crews and his promo. I'm liking this getting in touch with his essence, getting in touch with his lineage, his heritage, and who he is. I like this version of a Apollo Crews way more because he's actually showing some personality. He's not the dopey-looking, smiling, all-the-time type of guy, the almost caricature that Vince seems to love out of certain black wrestlers. You know, he's much more relatable. He's much more believable. Like, yeah. Like, fuck yeah. I want to see more of this Apollo Crews. And he beat Shinsuke Nakamura. Like, yeah, I'm okay with this. It's cool. Uh, but why is Tamina winning matches in 2021? And why are we doing nothing with Liv Morgan? People seem to like Liv Morgan. Nobody cares about Tamina. So why the hell is Tamina winning matches this year? If she was aligning herself with Roman and Jay, 
different conversation, different story. But as of now, she certainly is not. So you're throwing her out there in short matches where nobody gives a crap about her. And you're having to beat people that other people, like fans, might potentially care about. And then why do we have to f get forced to suffer through seeing Natalia on our television every week in any capacity or form whatsoever? Why? That's crap. It needs to stop. One of the big things on this week's show, of course, was going to be Bianca's big announcement of who she was going to challenge at WrestleMania 37. And you can see Reginald trying to slide right on in. Bianca, don't tell Tez. And what I love about this was Reginald was trying to slide right into Bianca's DMs by telling her how unworthy she was compared to Sasha and how she doesn't match up to Sasha. I'm like, yeah, that's the shit that woos a woman. Don't tell them how pretty they are, how gorgeous they are. Or how much you'd love to get to know him. Ah, pfft, on that. That's corny, that's dumb, and that doesn't get the job done. Tell them how insignificant they are. Tell them how unworthy they are. Then you're going to piss them off. And when you piss them off, you've got an emotional connection. They'll love you long time. Make you come like crazy. That's what you do, Reginald. You do you, man. Keep it up. Um, here, here's the thing, though. Like, I'm sitting there watching Bianca. And no, she's not perfect. But... Like, in her promos, there's an authenticity there. There's a realism there. Sasha just comes across very fake, phony. Which maybe is appropriate, maybe not. I don't know. But, I'm sorry, she's just not very good at promos. And you would think, as long as she's been in a featured spot, she would be better. She's not. I used to think Bailey sucked, but when Bailey turned heel, I started to see more of her as a performer and a character, and I started to get more appreciation when she got away from the stupid huggy crap gimmick. But Sasha, it doesn't really matter if she's heel or face. To me, her promos, nasally delivery, yet monotone, just don't connect. Like, whatever dialogue they're giving her, she doesn't do a good job, to me, it seems like, of absorbing it and then being able to communicate that out and do it in a way that would interest people, they're just really bad. But no matter what, nonetheless, we got to it. It's Sasha, Bianca. You know this is likely going to main event one of the two nights at WrestleMania. We're assuming night one. Yeah, let's get it on, ladies. As This is the big one. This is black girl magic all day. Fantastic stuff. Now, what I love about it is... You can make very strong arguments that both Sasha and Bianca need to win this match. Like, they feel like, it feels like there are stakes here. It feels like there's urgency here. Now I'm just trying to figure out how the hell Carmella fits into this equation. Oh, God. Just get it out of the way at Fastlane. Don't try to do it at WrestleMania. <laughs> you know, Petty Level Vince wants to throw her in that scene at WrestleMania. That's all I'm saying. Hopefully it'll be Fastlane so we get her the hell out of the way. Uh, Street Profits versus Baron Corbin and Sami Zayn. Most importantly of all, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Oh, look at me. I'm backstage sipping out of a red fucking solo cup. Because... Shut up. Why does he still have a job? You want to talk about cost-cutting measures? There's a cost-cutting of three quarters of a million dollars that you could reinvest in other people that actually have talent, that can actually get over, that are actually worth a crap. That said, Sami Zayn, of course, got fucking stuck with that six foot five, two hundred seventy pound sack of crap at Baron Corbin. So of course he lost this match. Just another conspiracy against our real Intercontinental Champion. It's a shame. Um, yeah, sucks. Not as bad as Seth Rollins. Well, there aren't too many things that suck more than he does. Oh, <laughs> we decided again. To give Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, whatever the fuck, the rating slayer, a live microphone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Embrace the vision of what? Seeing your ass being forced down everybody's throats for five more years? I'll pass on that. Thank you, Cesaro, for not saying a damn thing and just doing the Lord's work. And doing your spinny move that actually has gotten over over the years. And shutting this guy the hell up. Thank you, sir. Thank you for doing the Lord's work. 
Our main event for SmackDown this week was Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso. And the stakes for this, of course, were mentioned earlier in the night, is that if Daniel Bryan won this match, he gets a title match against Roman Reigns at Fastlane, which is total crap. Roman Reigns already beat Daniel Bryan in a relatively quick fashion, cold, at Elimination Chamber. And you're going to say, well, Daniel Bryan had to go through the Elimination Chamber. And Daniel Bryan had to rest all this time. No, Daniel Bryan was warmed up. Roman's trying to sit there and he's completely cold. You know, Daniel Bryan's lucky he got any shots in. Only Roman got in plenty of good, clean shots. But I can't believe what I'm going to say. Roman told Jay early in the night, it's all good. Just go out there and handle business. And son of a bitch by hook or by crook, Jay Uso did it. He did it. He actually came through for the tribal chief for once. Double count out means Daniel Bryan doesn't win, means Daniel Bryan doesn't get the title shot at Fastlane. Thank the Lord. Until, of course, next week he comes in and he pulls out the Caucasoid card, and I'm sure somehow, some way, they're going to finagle him into that opportunity after all. There's no wonder Roman wants to beat him down and Jay wants to beat him down. But you know what, you guys? You want to sit there and cheer for this little garden gnome? Fine. Let's have this match at Fastlane that you're going to find a way to get his entitled ass into. And you're going to see just why you didn't want that match at WrestleMania. You're going to see just how unworthy your once and former hero actually was. And maybe at some point you'll come to grips with reality and understand that the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, is your now current and future hero that you should get behind. Daniel Bryan is old news. Daniel Bryan is so 2014. It's a different decade. It's a different time. Time to get on board the island. That's all I'm going to say. You guys let me know how you thought SmackDown went this week. And how much you think it is a crock that they're going to try and get Daniel Bryan this title shot after all. He didn't win. That was a stipulation. You can't just sit there and be changing the rules because of his pigment. But just like the world today, you know they're going to. And it's crap.